What made me pursue this career? Um, I think number one, I'd say you sort of have to be a little off. <laughs> um, and just in terms of your mind, I know everyone's mind works differently and very individually, but every time I would show up once I started you know, playing French horn in eighth grade, and the more opportunities that I would get and different experiences that I would have, once I reached a point in my very young educational career, I should just say, in college, was officially at USC when I was studying there as a master's student. At school, I would show up to these jobs and I would hear a lot of musicians and some were incredible and sometimes others were not. And I would hear an oboe player squeaking notes that was supposed to be giving the pitch um, or their pitch was sharp and people would just tune to that. And I was going to this prestigious school <laughs> where people you know, don't make a lot of the mistakes. That they, they work really, really hard and I believe that a special person goes to USC as a musician. I think there's a special talent that you have to have to be at a school like that. And I was just this 18 year old kid that graduated from college to go to USC to study with, you know, Richard Todd, that was, you know, a very well-known French horn player throughout, I want to say, in, uh, domestic, you know, the United States. A lot of people knew about him, and he, I heard him on a lot of movies, and I had, you know, read about, so going to that school was a big honor for me, and then I also got to study with Vince DeRosa, who's now in his, you know, in his 90s, and um, it's a real big honor to study with these legendary people and go to this school as a pretty naive, you know, first year master's student. So that experience alone, and I think those experiences for me, learning how to use my ear better, you know, um, listening to people that were much better than me uh, was a real honor in those ways. But these jobs I would have where the clarinet player, or I would be playing, you know, second horn, fourth horn, third horn, and the first horn player, sadly, wasn't professional and you know sometimes it was youth orchestras but sometimes it was paid jobs and those paid jobs whether it was fifty dollars or seventy five dollars i still think that no matter what you're in a group and you're working hard and even if you're to sound to sound good and to have solid people and there is a pool of so much talent in this town so i would just kind of be offered to do a job and i would immediately ask the person calling me to hire me please let me know if, if you need any help <laughs> you need any musicians that you don't have I will help you find musicians. A lot of people would say that's not the smartest thing to do because it creates a lot of extra work and it creates um, a lot of, of doing and not receiving, I guess, a lot of giving and not receiving. I've learned now, fast forward a few years. But when you ask me that, why did I get started? I think initially that's really what it was. And then I got involved in an opera company and that changed a lot of things for me because I started learning something about press releases and I started to help this company start a, a nonprofit. And I didn't know what any of these, these real things really were so much. I mean, there was a girl from Hemet that didn't have electricity for a lot of years. So my pop culture knowledge may not be as um, excellent <laughs> as others, I should say. And I, and I pretty much live in the moment, um, reading papers and reading, I'm doing most of the time. So. I do read and I do research, but there's a lot I, I didn't know. So all of that, just the referral of people, and then this opera company and my involvement in helping them save on their budget, but yet be able to feed the orchestra instead of spending a ton of money on pizza that everyone in the world for musicians thinks that you, you purchase pizza because it's simple. Call me, dude. Call Tawny Lynn Music Services because I can work magic with not a lot of money and still provide healthy... <laughs> healthy, affordable meals for musicians that work hard, they drive, they practice their parts, they, I mean, all of the ins and outs that go into a law degree or uh, to be a doctor are exactly, exactly, if not, sometimes more intense being, being an artist, being a musician, because it, there's a healing aspect to music and to live music. I mean, you're asking me one question and as you see, I'm going crazy, but this is why, this is why, and I think it was calling me and more than I was calling it, I think there was just this desire to help make things a little better than they were. And somehow along the way, being a little off <laughs> just made me like, <laughs> like a Tasmanian devil and I haven't stopped. And a lot of exciting things are happening. So 
That's my answer for that first question. <laughs> oh, what is the most challenging part? Uh, okay, there is a lot of extremely challenging parts in having a business. No matter what personal development you do, no matter how much you research or read or how many classes you take, and everyone says this, every person I've ever respected or looked up to, whether I remember their name or not, has said this on, in some way, shape, or form. Ugh. So many challenges, and I don't want to say this, and I don't want this to be the first thing, but somehow it's coming out. I'm a female, and I embrace that, okay? And I love men. Oh, I love men. <laughs> um, however, in this, in this industry, in this world, and starting a business, not really knowing it was going to be a business. I mean, I, got start, I decided to get involved, but having it become a business was actually more of a demand, not to go into the last question, but I was just referring people and then all of a sudden I'm putting on this big show at the Gibson Amphitheater that was going to shut down for this big Italian, these big Italian artists, Il Polo. And I was ready to do it. I put 30 of these, 20 of these orchestras together a million times with the opera company I was managing. So that was not hard for me. I had an opportunity to have to be on stage with makeup and hair and I got, it was this amazing project, but there's, you know, all these other incorporated responsibilities that come with that aside from just contracting. So the challenge is, is was that, it was that alone, like thinking that this was a contracting thing <laughs> that I had to get started because of this demand and in two days I had to come up with the name of a business and okay, I guess now I have an LLC and before I was just referring people and making a few hundred bucks to put a bunch of operas together and it just kind of grew faster than I could ever imagine, I should say. Um, not faster than I can handle, because clearly I'm sitting right here on these <laughs> right. two legs, sometimes four if I do push-ups. Um, but challenging would be the way that I feel people don't respect me as a person first, and think maybe I don't have it together, I don't know, or think that they could take advantage of the situation because of how kind I am, or uh, completely say one thing and do something different or dream with me because I am a dreamer and most people who will watch this video know that I am a huge dreamer um, but dreaming with those people and and hearing them out and really putting my energy into that dream because I want to customize it I want to but I'm not being offered a fee or a salary or and I'm dreaming and then there's nothing that comes out of it right. you know so the most the biggest challenge is just really like under knowing your worth yes but, but that's not a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge because we all go through a lot in life, but understanding your worth and then finding the balance, 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 balance of what you're giving and what you're receiving when, you know, they talk about like some, something in the Bible. <laughs> they talk about um, forgiving, you know, forgiving people for, for their sins and their mistakes and all of this. Uh, but sometimes it's a very unforgivable business when you have to be in situations that are not sitting in a chair playing your instrument and you get to you know you, my job in the music services industry is services customer service musicians that are showing up and making that vision reality and oftentimes there's musicians that show up because they are there knowing that they have you know teaching to do they have to meet their friends for lunch they have to practice for an audition they have to go see their family member, the thousands of things that we go to the gym. I mean, come on, there's so many things, but in really being there and showing up and being present in your job. And there's some musicians I could just even name right now that I have always seen in this industry that have always shown up no matter what this, one person in particular actually, that no matter what the, their life is happening or what's going on, every time I see them on that stage, they are so present and pleasant and positive. And I feel like I'm like that on a, on a lot of levels, but that I've seen Lisa Dodlinger, I should say. Um, this is actually giving this woman is so humble and kind, and she is a team player, she's professional, and she's someone that I really feel like knows her, her worth and value. So not to go off of the subject of the question because it was the biggest challenge, but there's a bunch of them. And they're basically in how you're respected in the industry from others 
and how sometimes, unfortunately, people aren't interested in you or anyone else. They're really concerned about them, and that's okay because we need to be selfish. I need to learn how to be more selfish and do things for myself. However, I'm much happier just seeing that there's these people sitting in a chair playing this beautiful instrument, sounding good together, smiling, and making money and a living doing what they love and what they're giving to so many others. To all y'all people that love all these artists, all these amazing, famous artists that I have been honored to be, to meet and be blessed with being around and represent and work for, and you know, they're human, just like we are. So yeah, a lot, a lot of challenges, but clearly they're somehow all worth it because it just, in the end, really just teaches me the next step of where I'm supposed to go. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, however, I am a French horn player. Then I have a business. When I have a business and I play French horn, it's like, uh, yeah, you play French, okay, right, right. Most of the time in my experience, when, as I've been an artist, you know, on a, on a big tour, you know, such as, such as Josh Groban or, or one of my shockwave tours in, in, the, in the beginning days, but these, um, Oh, and I've really learned a lot um, being behind the scenes mm -hmm. and watching management. I was more interested in that kind of on tour. And I watched them talk about the ins and outs, you know, the tickets, the, the back the behind the stage, the food, the, the guests, artists, the um, something's wrong with some of the instrument, I, you know, wardrobe, all these different things behind the scenes that would be talked about were so fascinating to me and how these were put together and I would just always walk around and pay attention and watch but as a French horn player I need to warm up and play and there are so many elements being an artist I can say you know that have so benefited me uh, I am a bit more of a selfless person I think um, and I don't know if it's than the average person because I am really blessed to have a lot of amazing people in my life but Selfless in the sense where I, st I do step back somehow a lot. Maybe it's coming from a big family. I talk a lot too. But I am able to step back and observe and I kind of really want to just love everyone and give everyone, you know, I respect everyone. I think that somebody said this, like everyone is a genius. I think this woman I, oh, I heard at this amazing event I went to um, with People Helping People, this financial company I've been involved with for years. and. She said that everyone is a genius, and I think the same thing. Um, I would love to remember her name. It's I just can't right now. But it was such an incredible thing to hear because that's how I feel. I mean, that's really you know, there's something that I have that what you do really makes it work. You know, if you can really find that, and of course you find oftentimes that it just doesn't fit right, and right. and it can't be that way. But the combination of the both and just understanding what an artist does need and being with artists such as. Josh Groban and Nathan Pacheco and these amazing, you know, art, artists that I've gotten to meet in my life and, and be around professionally and personally a little bit, you know, it's, it's been a cool mix and balance because, man, being at that level, I can't really imagine because of the people and how they treat you. I just want to be treated like me because that's who I am and that's right. when you can actually shine as yourself as the most. It's when people are not judging you either. But sadly, people judge themselves so much that that's what happens. And so in terms of like being both French horn and and the business side, it's just been able to really kind of somehow meld it, itself into one another. So yes, it's helped a lot, and it's also made it extremely challenging in balancing it. And I will not ever say anything different. Um, but it definitely keeps me, I think keeps me really young. and. I, I continue to hopefully inspire and to raise the bar and create more longevity and sustainability in this industry um, because a lot of incredible musicians lie in this town alone. Let's start here and see what the rest of us can do with the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them which I, I sadly don't know their name because I do read a lot of mm -hmm. what the universe tells me to read as opposed to picking up a book and reading it from beginning to end. 
and I've learned that in my career being universal and, and letting the moment take you where it's going to take you, that is not easy, man. Oh my goodness. And I think you have to seriously be a person, sadly, but truly from my own experience, that has gone through a lot of really, really horrendous and uh, unexplainable uh, and confusing, traumatic thing, experiences. Right. You know, I don't know why, I don't, but I've always known that there was a reason. And, and it's been very difficult to figure out how to just let today, right now, this moment with you right. feel the way that it does because the way this mind here works, mm -hmm. um, Diana Jo, senior <laughs> vice president of uh, People Help Me People, she tells me that I tend to literally talk as fast as I think. And I don't wanna take that away. Right. Because I feel that if I wasn't like that, <laughs> and I love the people that embrace it and, and love me, thank you so much. If I wasn't like that, none of the things that are happening right this moment, and they're very exciting things, would be happening, you know? Right. So one person, few, quite a few people, I, I have to give credit to my teachers in, in this industry. I mean, starting in high school, man, I've always wanted to do this. Ken Bisky was my high school band director, and I played flute, and he said something about, I was probably talking in the second row of the flute section, and surprise, surprise. And he said, hey, hey, does anyone want to play French horn? And I think I heard the word and I somehow maybe stood up and said, I'll, I'll play French horn or vice versa. He said, hey, Tawny, you know, do you? That was right when school was ending and I took the French horn home and I taught myself how to play. That man, I mean, he gave me lessons and immediately would just put music in front of me. And I knew how to read. I knew, you know, and no matter how, it was just this. And he would tell me the things to do to fix it. And he was a trumpet player, is a trumpet player. And I would, his, his saxophone student, it's a, well-known saxophone is Jessie J in, in Los Angeles and all around. You know, I used to hear her and this other saxophonist play their scales three octaves up and down. It was so cool to hear that like technical ability and he was such a good teacher, you know, and that really did teach me a lot about structure and focus and moving forward and reading music and sight reading is, has so much to do with, I think, entrepreneurship and business if you really relate the two. Because it's not easy to be a sight. I mean, I was playing quartets this morning with my friends, and it is something that is requires a lot of skill and development. And so we say, who you know, thanking these people? Like this is part of now how I'm even running my business. Right. And then I go to college and I meet uh, Mr. Keith Johnson, who was a second father to me at the time. And I don't think I ever had kind of a second father figure um, besides my my papa. And I remember I was wearing uh, my beach clothes because I was from California. And, and he literally um, had made a comment that of the clothes I should wear in lessons. And this is being a naive 19 year old in college, you know. I'm not a hoochie mama. I, I'm just a little young surfer girl thinking from California. And I learned from that because being able to be honest and tell your students and guide them. And, you know, um, he was in the opera. You know, he wasn't maybe, he, he just taught me a lot about growing up and becoming an adult. And. He actually referred me to study with this man, Richard Todd at USC. And I think those were definitely the three mentors. I mean, when you say to thank, I mean, that's in my French horn career performance, but watching Keith Johnson as a father and, you know, coming back years later and um, seeing him retire and coming back to the school and seeing his other students and then playing as a professional and all the observations of business, watching them as professionals. And then Richard Todd was like the cream of the crop to get you know him and um, him and his family. I'm I'm very cl very close to his his children, and um, it's one of those experiences that all of those experiences combined is I feel like my three triangular of those mentors and influences that have really kind of guided me and pushed me and kept me going because they all believed individually in something that I had as such as a talent that I was just wanting to be the best I could be and you know, sound as good as I can sound, and I'll, I'll do anything, I'll go in, I'll sit there, sure, okay, yeah. I mean, being adaptable, learning, you know, how to be adaptable, these, so those I think definitely would be three of the crutches that, you know, um, and then business-wise, personally, I also did grow up watching, you know, with my family, five kids in my family, all my sisters, I mean, man, they're all family, they're all, they're all parents now, 
my mom is a definitely hero. I, I mean, come on, my mommy and my daddy, like five kids in my family, eight nieces and nephews, um, and, and my booker, my dog. That is, all of those are to me, you know, you say one person that I've been so influenced by a lot of that because your family treats you much differently than your friends. And they're a little harder on you and they, you know, are a little more sensitive than you want them to be and right. that they want you to be. And um, I would love for us all just to embrace each other and accept and love one another, but that's not always sadly how it works. I touch my heart as you know this with, with immediate family. However, there is so much respect I have for being guided on, in those directions. So, so many different people, that's definitely some of them. <laughs> Oh, this is a, another, this is a really good question. There, I mean, there's so many things, right? When you experience all of these different things um, right. and all these different levels and ways and places you never thought you'd be and, ah, uh, be a sponge, mm -hmm. learn how to be adaptable, learn it, travel. That's not a box, but take yourself out of the the box and however to be in this industry as a musician as an artist and what it takes research it you know read what it actually but then also understand it respect it you need to check your ego at the door mm -hmm. and this was just told last night at a master class with my student and I we were sitting next to each other and this is what Barbara Joelstein said and her her brother and um, Michelle Baker, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of things happening in this head. I know who you all are. Um, they were at this master class, and that's, you know, they, they said this in a section, talking to 10 horn, sorry, 50 horn players, or whatever it was. And they're in the Metropolitan Opera, you know, St. Sam, uh, St. Louis Symphony. Mm -hmm. They've been a family for years, and, and having a professional job is something you take very seriously. So when I say take yourself out of the box, it's not fair that's when you have to be in the box right so there's a very big difference in the, in the two worlds when you talk about being a musician okay you want to play music play music take music classes learn an instrument go to YouTube watch educational videos hopefully on my website I'll have a lot of this stuff very soon I, I think it's all so important I think every instrument is intricately important and amazing and magical and all of the abilities that that one instrument has and then you add the players and their personalities and their similarities and their differences and, and it's just like this magical really kind of fun land you know that, that you learn from um, but as a, as a musician you just want to play learn and be in community orchestras and groups and play okay be involved find places and things to do things but always leave your ego at the door even in that situation if you're community orchestra and you're playing the top part and you hear the person next to you is a little better like be a community <laughs> you know and then it comes to being in college and taking it more seriously and wanting to be professional and starting to get college level professional jobs okay not that if you're a prodigy and if you're an artist you know you shouldn't be doing these solo jobs but there is a ladder okay and you walk up the ladder. Mind you, I tend to dive into the middle of the pool and just start swimming wherever I need to go. And I don't know if I recommend that for everyone, um, but there's a ladder and you climb up it by hard work and you continue to get there. You know, you don't, you don't step on someone's toes. Don't take work from other people. I mean, this industry is a community and if, if you're in it for yourself and having the competitive nature is great. Being competitive is good, but be competitive with yourself. Be competitive with yourself and have expectations for you and what you do every day. If you see yourself online all day looking at other people and you find yourself very bitter and angry, check yourself out the door. <laughs> Come on, everyone, you have this thing in your head, like it's a brain and it works really well <laughs> if you let it. If you breathe, which I need to remember to do very often. Um, but really, those are some huge tips in, in getting like even starting, you know, at college level and taking those college level jobs, accept the jobs. Do things for free. Please, if you're in college, join the Police Academy Band. Get in touch with me. It's an incredible band, and they play some amazing music with a kick-ass conductor and world-class pianist, I must say. I'm sorry, but he's an awesome musician. And 
these are things that college kids need to be doing. And you have rehearsals, you have college, you have school. And I know at the end of your day, you want to go to the bar. I know you want to drink booze. I know you want to go to Starbucks. I know you want to smoke a little weed. <laughs> That's kind of cool. However, start thinking about your future. Start thinking about your finances. Think something about when I graduate, you, you think it in college like I've got to win a job, an orchestra job. Yes, do that. Go for it. I'm taking an audition at the end of October and I'm going to play my as hard as, as well as I can play and I'm going to practice these things as much as I can. <laughs> and I will make it a priority as much as I humanly can. But these are just different steps like, you know, amateur and then actual professional level. And there's different levels up the ladder. So you become a sponge, learn how to become adaptable, work really hard, be diligent, use your tuner, use your metronome when you play, learn timing, learn rhythm, learn syncopation, go see live performances, check out live music. Pay attention to your career. You know, there's all of these little pieces of advice, but it's a ladder. I mean, you gotta take each one of the things, that, you know, and actually actively do those things. Be involved in your community. You know, volunteering is pretty amazing. Yes, you need to make money. I do agree. Now, if you wanna be in the industry, let's transition, right? As a musician, learning like a sponge and absorbing, get yourself in an internship. See someone that has a business and might need a little help sometimes, and they have a hard time asking for it. And they essentially have done a lot of it themselves, but now all of my dreams are literally happening because of all of these incredible people that I have known and have been in the industry and have played concertmaster for me for a gig I couldn't pay them a lot on or done a fundraiser for something that I needed. I have always, always wanted the best for those people and I've always done my best to give them something, some sort of appreciation I want to collect. There's so many moving parts in this industry, and if we all really hold hands and you know come together and you're willing to give a little, you will get a lot more. Um, I do think it's important to practice. I do think it's teachers. If you're a teacher and you teach a lot, you have a schedule. That's kind of cool because it gives you way more structure than I've ever had, and I do have uh, an all-star student, but I don't have 20 students. You know, I, I, I never have, and I don't know if I will but I really feel strongly about all these things I've said and leading up you know, to the industry of just, you have to respect yourself first. Um, is that easy? Hell no. Why? Because people judge you. Sadly, you might be one of those people that I don't know, but look in the mirror and I think, just pay attention to you and, and what you need to be doing for your heart, for your health, for your mind. Um, for your skills and abilities, if you don't know what you want to do, join some volunteer groups, join the meetup groups, you know, just be a part of society, learn about politics on the positive, turn off the bad news, put the good news in your life, you know, and play music all the time, no matter what your mood is, and pay attention to lyrics. I think those are some big ones at the end that I may or not, may or may not have failed a few times in my life to pay attention to. And as music is healing and all I want to do is, is give music to the world, I can't be one person that plays French horn, that's just not, right. you know, you, you mean you add, there's so many amazing French horn players and so many amazing other players. And my goal is to create more sustainability and longevity in this industry and beyond. So I think that's, that's the advice. <laughs> I've often been told by many different people in walks of life, in many locations in the world, certain things when I talk to them, you know, like, why don't you start your own event planning company? You should have your own orchestra. Have you made your own, have you made an album yet? All these things that I'm like, no, Tony, you need to write a book. <laughs> okay, well, first I need to get through 50,000 things to do today, <laughs> right? Um, but never, I didn't really ever think, I don't know, I just didn't know what any of that meant. It was exciting and I, well, I believe it's all kind of on some levels, possibly, you know, taking place. There's a very exciting event that we actually have coming up with Tawny Lynn Music Services. I'm working with Swing House Studios in Atwater Village. Um, we are honoring, uh, it's a very, very big, exciting celebration, honoring the 250th um, anniversary albums of the Beatles. 
And so, let me just, there's a lot. So, and it's all kind of happening. So it's literally Tiny Lynn Music Services is, is putting on a concert at Swing House Studios, premiering the Los Angeles Classic Rock Orchestra, wow. um, led, led and owned by Anthony Boncera. And a little bit about Anthony is he, he is a, a trumpet dude that just happened to play with Big Bad Voodoo Daddy for years on tour. So he was a roadie, so he gets being adaptable, let me tell you about that. And we've been partnering up and having a lot of very exciting developments in place. We will be honoring an extremely prominent art designer, director, very well known in the world of, of the Beatles and everywhere else named John Kosh. He will be honored at this event and we are very much uh, fine tuning the details, but we will have some tickets going on sale very soon, um, which are three tier level. So we will have VIP tickets, we will have the Beatles signature ticket, or you know, being sold, and then we'll have some uh, some general admission tickets, which may be instructed view a little, and it's probably standing room, but it is a very limited uh, ticket sale amount. It will be on uh, sold on my website very soon, so that's exciting because you say, you know, what next do you kind of envision? And I believe that this is for sure the biggest event and biggest project I've ever taken on. And it's all so exciting. I have about a 10 person team right now. Wow. Um, I kind of want to give all them credit. So it's, I mean, I don't know if I'm talking too much. No, go for it, absolutely. But I, these people are so intricate and integral in this, this process. I could not do this without them. And when you say that, gosh, it's repeated and I hear people say that, I'm actually saying it, but it's so true. Um, besides Anthony Boncera and Jonathan Hoover over at the Swing House, um, whom is a new relationship with, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, everyone at the Swing House, of course, but Micah Miller, who is the executive director of the Harmony Project, has been helping me in and out with this, mind you, USC grad, I have to say, of oboe performance, and also a master's in communications, business communications. So this badass of a woman is like, helping, I, she is incredible, okay? So that's one of the people on the team. And then I also have to really um, give a lot of thanks to Edgar Sandoval and Marta Honer. They are helping put the orchestra together with me. And we have been going through people and we will be holding auditions very soon, um, which will be posted as well and announced only for selected spots. Um, we have a lot of the orchestra filled we are also going to open up the orchestra to select college students. So this will be mostly on referral basis based off of professors at schools. So if anyone is actually watching this, there's a lot of information I'm going to be asking for a lot of people soon. And then Mr. Matt Evans is a, a, a great bass trombonist who has some marketing media experience. And he's going to be working as a librarian and the music prep um, man that he's been in the whole scheme of this event, helping a lot. And then, of course, I, I have to give a lot of credit to my uncle. He has a special relationship with John Kosh himself. They've been friends oh. for years. And it's kind of where the, the bread meets the butter, uh, the gold meets the silver. I don't even know what to say, but it's this beautiful opportunity for all of us. You'll have an opportunity to not only see some of John Kosh's incredible 2D artwork, but you'll have a chance to purchase several different items for all different prices, which will be very exciting. Um, and his wife, of course, Kay, she's been super cute, bringing her little dog over. She's very awesome. She's my bargaining girl. She's my little, keeps me little Asian Korean. That's awesome. <laughs> she's just like, Tawny, you need to stay on track. I said, yes, you're right. Uh, and then my, my two superstars, uh, I have to say, Caitlin Sandberg, and she's my assistant, my angel, my student, um, just starting college with a broken back. <laughs> wow. Playing her French horn, superhero status. And Miss Natalie Rouland, who is my media and marketing consultant, graphic designing, <laughs> uh, incredible artist, um, going to Pepperdine. So I oh. 
think that that might not be enough people to thank most immediately because now I've also added Studio B Productions to all of this with entire, this is, this is a show people and you really want to come see it. So we're sending out some special uh, private invitations first for ticket purchase and then we will go sail on public in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not sure how many tickets will be left, but that's, I think, definitely the people I want to thank. Is that what was going on right now? Yeah, or just things you're excited about upcoming Oh, yeah, and... that's one, and then there's so, uh, and then next year, this Los Angeles Classic Rock Orchestra taking off, there is a, an incredible re Resonance Horizon Orchestra that is a, a new video game orchestra. I'm collaborating with them and referring some incredible musicians to them for their season up and, up and coming. Playing at maybe E3 in San Diego next year. Don't quote me, but I know that it's an event, a gaming event next year, um, and, and having a live orchestra is wow. able to play. So that's very exciting cool. to be more involved in that. I'm very excited to see what happens with the rest of Portugal the Man's tour. Uh, and how many more times they decide that they want an auxiliary band in a city. They've only done five so far. So this Houston show coming up is going to be a special show. And then we've got Odessa. That wow. if you know who they are, yeah. if, you, if you don't, you should. You read the definition of that word alone and you need to say nothing more. It's the power of everything I've been trying to do and the... Uh, it's they're going to be on Jimmy Kimmel on the 25th of October, so that's kind of cool. And they're having a French horn player, and Mr. Paul Cartwright is putting together an incredible group of musicians, a couple of singers. Um, yeah, it's all a uh, very very exciting things happening. There's a lot of work to be done, <laughs> um, and I think pretty much yeah, the dream is really just to see how and when most immediately I can create more sustainability and longevity in this business with hopefully a financial program going on in colleges. Colleges, if you're watching this and you're interested, please get in touch with my business. I am working with this financial company to, to see what can happen. And right now what they're, they're able to do is, for instance, if you're in a symphony and you make about $75,000 a year, just to talk from high to low, why not? Um, you have tenure in your orchestra, and you have 10 or more members in your orchestra, and you're getting pension, you're not happy with the taxes, you're not, you want to have someone come and talk to the, the board or your financial advisors about other options. They have full life um, and health benefits that are whole life policies that offer retirement plans and medical and so many different options and opportunities that it's incredible that this financial company is able to do this now. And so we are working on a new program to, to implement into colleges. So I want to start down here. And if you as a college student get a job that's 50, 75, $100 for five hours, take it, mm -hmm. take it. You're, you're in the music business. You want to learn how to make situations and sections better. You want to be a part of a community. You don't always need to be number one. And it just makes you more of a humble person, I think. I mean, in... And not, not everyone. Some people are prodigies. They need to be number one. They really do. And I am glad for you, and I respect you so much. <laughs> I put you on a different pedestal. I also consider, you know, you just like me. It's it's a different role. It's a different, you know, job, job opportunity. Um, but this whole process, and when you say in the next six months, man, if you're anyone that can help me get this thing off the ground, and you're willing to put some time and effort into my business, I promise I want you to see the light at the other end of the tunnel as well. I have a lot of people I want to pay. I have a lot of people in this industry that deserve to make a regular income in what they do. And so if, if you find that you want to help in any way, I will, I will gladly take it. <laughs> and I think that that's pretty much my answer.